Narendra from Do With Python Technologies. In this video, we are going to see what is automation and simple example for your automation through shell script. Then why automation is required. And finally, we will see how automation can be achieved. Okay, then let me start with first concept that is what is automation. Guys, uh, simply automation is a process by which we can complete any task with less human intervention or without human intervention. Sometimes you need uh, human intervention and sometimes you don't need human intervention to run your tasks. Right? We will see that when um, human intervention is required and when it is not required. Okay. Guys, finally, simply automation is nothing but completing a task with scripting. That scripting may be uh, shell scripting or Python scripting or Ruby or Perl, whatever it may be. Based on requirement and based on situation, you will select suitable scripting. That's it. Okay. Now here we are going to see some example, a simple example to automate a task. Actually, my task is deploy or install Jenkins on Tomcat server. Right. So suppose uh, in your DevOps concept, if you want to run Jenkins, okay, you are having different procedures, but one of the procedures is you have to install Tomcat and then on the top of Tomcat, you will deploy your Jenkins app. So this task I am going to automate. See how automation, how automate this task. Not only this task, if you want to automate any task, you need to follow some steps. Very first step is you need to get all manual steps first. I mean, what are the commands required for that uh, task if you perform manually, right? Suppose here, I'm going to show that for our task, what are the manual steps you required and its commands? Guys, okay, very first step is to uh, deploy or to run your uh, Jenkins and Tomcat, you need Java, right? So you have to check your Java on your host. In case if Java is not present, then install it using your M command. Then step two, download your required Tomcat. Based on your required version, you can download Tomcat version, right? So download Tomcat. So suppose if you download Tomcat as a Thor G profile, then you have to extract it. After that, right? where you want to place this extracted file. That means what is your Tomcat home? So you need Tomcat home as well. That's okay. Then step three, download Jenkins. Right. And Jenkins also, whether you need latest version or uh, any particular version, based on that, you have to download it. Once if you download your Jenkins, you have to move this uh, Jenkins into Tomcat web apps directory location. After that, just run your Tomcat by starting, uh, just run your Jenkins by starting your Tomcat, right? So start Tomcat server so that you can run your Jenkins. And finally, you can access your uh, Jenkins apps. You are using your local host or your public IP address then default port is 8080 for your tomcat and then slash jenkins so these are the manual steps of install after installing your jenkins to access your jenkins okay of course first four steps are to install your jenkins on the top of tomcat and fifth step is just to access your jenkins uh, ui right so first step we got manual steps then write a shell script. So once if you get all your uh, steps to complete your task manually, then try to write a shell script. I mean, any script you can write, but here we are going to uh, see shell script. Now write your script based on these steps. Here I already implemented one shell script for our task. Let me show that. But here, what I am doing is, I implemented two files. One is shell script. And one more is some configuration details. First, I will show what is that configuration details. See here, suppose for my Tomcat, my Jenkins, if I need any particular Java version, 
I already implemented suppose one shell script for one requirement. In future, if you want to modify the version details, if you want to install or deploy some different Tomcat, different Jenkins, you should not disturb your existing shell script. Instead of that, make a separate file. There you just to provide your required version details so that our shell script will execute on those details. That is the concept I followed here. Okay. Now suppose in configuration details, I have taken my Java version is this one, Tomcat version this one, on Tomcat home somewhere and Jenkins version latest I'm going to take. If you're going to take some different version, you just modify this and run your shell script. Right. So let me show my shell script now. See here, I implemented my shell script completely with functions concepts. Basically, it's a good habit. Okay. So my functions are like some pre steps and these are for logging concept and from to check Java, whether Java is there or not. If it is there, whether it is there greater than 1.8 or not. Okay. If it is not there, it will install your uh, latest version, whatever you provided in your install configuration file. Then to download your required Tomcat that to whatever the Tomcat you provided in your install con file. And uh, again, it will download Jenkins. That is also based on uh, what is the version you want. You, we already mentioned that in your uh, install.con file. That thing it will download. And finally, it will copy the Jenkins to Tomcat web apps. And after that, it will start your Jenkins by running Tomcat. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a shell script. If you want to see, just see that this is simply a shell script for our task. This thing. Okay. You can observe here each and every function and you can once if you go through that, you can try to understand uh, what is the each and every function is doing. It's a very simple shell script. Of course, it is one of the DevOps uh, required shell script. Okay. Okay. Now, suppose we got our shell script as well. Then just execute your shell script. Okay. See, I am going to execute my shell script, but before going to execute, be clear. So we are here and just observe in your home location because in my configuration files, right? So Tomcat home, I selected my home. That means uh, it will install here. See here, we don't have uh, except DevOps, we don't have any directories or files here. So in this location, actually it will install my Tomcat. Okay. Now I'm running our shell script. Just observe that what it's doing. It is going to automate your installation and uh, copying of your Jenkins, everything. See that checking first Java version. It is not there. It is going to install our required 1.8.0. Okay. We know that it will take some time to install. We have to wait up to that. Once if it is done, yeah, it's done. Then it's going to download Tomcat. Once it is downloaded, then it is extracting. Yes, then it is moving to require Tomcat home location. Whatever the home location we are giving there, that location it will move. Then downloading latest Jenkins hardware file, it downloaded, it's copied, successfully copied. Then starting Tomcat to run Jenkins web app. Yes, it's ran that. And our, finally, it is giving how you can access Jenkins using uh, below URL. You can access. See, Amazon is to public IP, then 8080, then Jenkins. So for our whatever the instance we are running, right? For that EC2 instance, let me take my public IP address. And of course, you can also check here itself, right? See, let me check. PS hyphen EF you are Tom, sorry. Pipeline grab some cat. Yes, it's running, right? Okay, then try to access uh, URL. So this is Amazon EC2 instance public IP slash Jenkins. Yes, now you will see. Yes, it's showing something. You can observe the title here. Yeah. Unlocked in. So we know that if this, this is the information, forget whenever if you are going to open or working with your Jenkins at very first time, right? So that means actually we 
started our Jenkins with the help of our shell script. Okay, so guys, this is the way uh, how to use uh, your shell script to automate your real time task. Of course, it's a very simple uh, shell script, but uh, you can do whatever the uh, requirement you are having by following these three steps. Okay, so guys, this is uh, simply automation and how achieve your automation. Okay, then why automation? Right. Simply, I can say accuracy in data handling. Because, guys, manually, whenever if we are performing some task, there may be a chance to uh, provide some wrong command, something like. But once if you write a shell script, and once if it is tested, then your shell script, after successfully uh, completion of test, testing, your shell script won't to do any mistakes, right? So that's why accuracy in data handling. Of course, it is very, very important for our uh, real time, right? Then to improve productivity. See, suppose if you are going to do some task, it is going to take some 20 minutes on a single server. If you want to perform same task on multiple servers, of course, to, multiple, to perform any task on multiple servers at a time, you're having some configuration management tools. That's a different story. But if you don't have some configuration management tools concept, now to perform your task on 10 servers you are going to come you are going to take 20 minutes right it's a disadvantage for us so now if you have a shell script just to open your shell uh, any operating system just run your script then leave it then go for second server there you can just run your shell script then go for other server so that you can complete your task with in less time on more servers that means you are going to improve your productivity Right? Then to reduce employee power, of course it is disadvantage for us, but it is an advantage for our organization. Right? Then, see why we are going to reduce employee power means through scripting, once if you have a script for any task, you just run that on any server and same task you can go and execute on different server by copying that script and you don't need to wait completion of that task on first server. Simply just leave that as it is and go to second server. So that you can reduce your employee power. Right? And finally, it is a faster and cheaper. We know that. Right? Because of all these properties, we can say simply it is a faster and cheaper. Right? So that is the need of automation. Okay. Now, how automation can be achieved? Guys, uh, basically automation can be achieved with the help of scripting languages. You are having so many scripting languages. You can go with any one scripting language and you can complete your task. But sometimes for some situations, self scripting is good for sometimes Python scripting is good for sometimes ML scripting is good. So based on situation, you have to select particular scripting language. So finally, scripting languages are used to automate your task. Right? There are so many scripting languages like Perl, Java, VBScript, AppleScript, right? Golang, even ShellScript and Python script, AML script. There are so many. Using all these things, you can automate your script. Right? But suppose if you have your shell script to automate your task, then even though you automated these steps, but if you want to run your shell script, you need manual intervention. Now, if you don't want human intervention to run your script, then you need some automation tools. These are just to trigger your script. Like suppose cron job, you're having cron job scheduler on your Linux machines, on any Unix like systems, so that you will uh, schedule a job through cron tab so that at any particular time, automatically your script will run at that time you no need of any manual intervention right you no need any human intervention to run your script if you go with automation tools guys right? automation is different automation tools are different so automation tools are used to trigger your script on a single server or on multiple servers based on tool suppose if you go with the cron job 
it is used to trigger on single server suppose if you go with some hpsa or some ansible chef puppet something like you are going to trigger your script on multiple servers at a time right so simply automation tools are used to trigger your script either on single server or on multiple servers right so before going to work with automation tools you should be good with the scripting languages of course not all at least uh, shell python ml it's good okay okay now actually we are going to deal with a bash shell scripting course and this course is suitable for uh, those who are working as os admins and those who are working for admins as middleware and web server admins and database admins and finally the devops admins so for all these admins we are going to cover shell scripting okay okay guys thank you for watching this video do subscribe my channel so that you will notify your new updates whenever you post some new videos and if you are interested about this course you can drop a mail to this do it python at the gmail.com okay we are also having website www.doitpython.com but it will be open very shortly i mean in 2019 we are going to open this uh, website okay guys thank you bye